Hey guys, it's Stephanie. I'm Trey. This is your weekly dose of BS. I'm kind of stressed. Why? Tomorrow's a big day for me. Okay, so we're recording this on Monday, just so you can get your bearings straight how I tell this story. This will come on Thursday. So by Thursday, I will either um, still have a job or I absolutely won't if my intrusive thoughts win because I'm interviewing Mauricio on Wednesday. Oh, ooh, yay. And You're, you'll totally still have a job. Well, I don't know. Depending on, you know, how many espresso martinis I had before and if I decide to go rogue <laughs> and ask things I shouldn't ask. So I wanted to ask you... What are a list of questions that you absolutely would not ask? Trey, I am not the person to, well, but, I mean, okay, you but should. But you wouldn't, well, no, you would encourage me to ask all the bad things. Yeah, but that's what I know what you wouldn't ask the bad things. But like, he seems like the nicest guy ever. So I don't want to be like, so how's your lesbian? <laughs> like he's not his that's lesbian. That's number one. That's it something is, I shouldn't ask. How are you doing after, you know, like your breakup to see if he says that they're broken up or not? Just I feel like, like I need to work around it a little end. bit better than that. Like, I need to be like, so, what's the Christmas card looking like this year? Or, you know, <laughs> something perfect. like, I got. we got to, like, work our way into it. Yes, I, I completely agree. Or, like, get whoever you don't like in the office to ask all the bad questions, and then I they know. get fired, and then you have a happier office life. That's, ooh, that's a yes. good idea. Then you kill two birds with okay. one stone. Get oh. all the details and get the uh, person you don't like out of there. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. But you have to find a way to ask, even if it's, you know, off the podcast, so then you can tell me and I can tell everybody. Because then you can't get in trouble. Oh, I'm gonna I don't find out. There. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna get the tea. But he just like, you know, if he was an asshole, I'd be like, so what's going on? But he seems like a very nice guy, and I'm like, that's that makes it so much harder. No, just get the details. Get the okay, details. You're right. Um, I so how would you ask you. that? How would you ask those details? Well, I wouldn't. I would find the person <laughs> I don't like and have them do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like if he was here right now, what would you say? I would have you do it. I and would say be like, what? oh my gosh, Trey has a question for you <laughs> about your Christmas card. <laughs> about your Christmas card. Yeah. Yeah. Be, oh my gosh, Trey was uh, wondering how you're doing in your marriage or something. Like that's how I would do it. I would totally blame <laughs> it on you. I was wondering. <laughs> we were talking about this all morning. Yeah, um, Trey <laughs> called me just about this one thing and he wants me to ask on his behalf. I would... Hundred percent, throw you under the bus. Oh, yay! But well, get the answer I right desired. Be there. Yep. <laughs> it's so exciting. Well, I'll let you know how it goes. I cannot wait. Okay, I have a story to tell you. You're not ready. What? You are not. I actually had to write it down because oh, no. I was dying in my car this morning um, with my children. Okay, so we're leaving the house and Cruz. God bless his soul. Like he is not. Like he'll get up and take a shower. But he kind of like hangs out really doesn't have a sense of urgency to get collect all those things until like when we're walking out the door right mm -hmm. so we're getting ready to walk out the door and he's like mom do you have earbuds i or earbuds i can borrow and i was like well no i but you i'm gonna i stole your dad's uh <laughs> <laughs> air, like little um AirPods? headphones no he, he no because then we'd be fine travis has these ones um and they kind of go around your ear they okay. almost look like like a boast, like like yeah, yeah, like but they're they go around your ear and then like insert inside your ear. So almost okay. like, almost like like a hearing aid. You know how they go around uh, the back of your ear, like uh -huh. looking thing. And I was like, you, you know, I was gonna go work out and use these, but you know, if you need them for school, you're more than welcome to them. And I said, but honestly, like borrow one of your brother's headphones. He has a million. So then he goes upstairs, can't like can't locate any of Chance's things and Chance has his that he uses for school and Cruz is like well dang I really need these for school I just forgot about it until today I'm like well there's no time like five minutes for I have to leave to <laughs> let me know that that's data so anyway so we get in the car and I'm like Cruz you can use these he's like no I can't they look so dumb mom I'm not going to use those I'd rather just make a zero uh, <laughs> than look stupid at school and I was like, well, he was, I was like, then he was like, but you know, Cruz is like, or Chan said, Cruz, you have your own AirPods. And he was like, yeah, but I can't use those. And I was like, well, why can't you use your AirPods that I gave you? They're like the old ones. It's because my other son, Chance, named them Butthole Binger. So whenever they pop up to um, connect to your device, um, the device is uh, oh. butthole binger uh, you're trying to connect to. And he was like, and I can't do that at school because I'll get in trouble by my teacher if somebody tries to connect and they say butthole binger's AirPods. Oh, my goodness. 
So anyways, that was my morning. So then I told Chance, you have until 5 o'clock after school today to change the name from Butthole Binger to Cruises AirPods or you're grounded. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, so good, so good. I didn't even know you could do that, but yes, oh, man. Um, that was my morning. That's exciting. AirPods. Yes, yes, yes. Are, are they in relationship still? Who? Chance and Cruz. In a relationship? Yeah. Are they still their girlfriends? Oh, I thought you met with each other. No, I was well, like, what kind of <laughs> country ass thing do you have? You think I have going on in my home? <laughs> I know. Yeah, do they have girlfriends? Cruz does. Chance, I don't know. He is so secretive. I have no idea if they're still together or not. Zero I think Chance idea. got broken up with. Maybe, because I don't know. He's very secretive. I can tell when he's in a relationship because he's real cocky, but then whenever like things go south, he just gets real He gets quiet. real, oh, yes. Unless he's the one that broke up with her, and, and then, then he's, he's usually pretty vocal cocky. about it. Yes. But he's been real hush-hush lately. Yes. I know Cruz is because they have to be together for the rest of the year because <laughs> they like they cannot break up. It's a long she's his relationship. Only and honestly, I think that they theirs is kind of cute. They're just really good friends. I was like, can you... Have you ever held your girlfriend's hand at school? And he said, no, mom. And I was like, why? And he said, because it's against the rules. And I said, okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's anything like super romantic. He's 12. I think mm -hmm. it's more like they just hang out and they're friends. And I don't know. He needs to get a haircut. I was like, if you don't get a haircut, your girlfriend is <laughs> definitely breaking up with you. You look horrible lately. His oh. hair is like so grown out. So trying to help him. Oh, boy. But yeah, Chance, I don't know. I have him signed up for this. Um, I, it's really weird. I don't even know what it's called. Um, but I signed him up because if I, if not, he's going to want to do it and I'm going to, it's going to be too late, but it's like this group that you can be a part of where you can go to all these different dances with different private schools in Dallas. There's like four or five private schools and you can have like social mixers okay. and maybe if him and his girlfriend broke up, this would be great because he can find a new girlfriend. This is for chance. Um, this is for chance. I didn't know I did this. Did he want to do that? And I didn't even ask my, I just, oh. it was like a hundred bucks and I was like, it's worth a hundred dollars to just not be annoyed whenever he decides all of his <laughs> friends are going and he wants to go. So I'm just hedging all my bets. It's worth the money. Last year, <laughs> he had a dance at school and I was like, do you want to go to this dance? Because I want to make sure that he looks decent, yeah. you know, like there's a suit, tie, things you need to get right. for a dance. And I don't have, like, I don't go out and buy my kids suits and ties for fun because they grow <laughs> too much. And he said, no, I do not want to go to this dance, mom. That's stupid. Like, I have no desire. And I said, okay, perfect. So then he has a basketball game the day of the dance. There's two hours until the dance starts, and he's decided, walking out of the basketball game, oh. that he would now like to go to this school dance. <laughs> we have nothing for nothing for this child to wear. And um, so I have to hightail it to uh, the mall. The only place that had a suit for him was Zara. Thank God Zara exists because I did find a suit that did not look too horrible. And on it's like him. under a hundred bucks. And it was like literally under a hundred bucks. I bucks. I even bought him Zara sh Zara shoes. I'm like, this is what you're wearing. You're welcome. <laughs> Next time, be a little. I plan a little ahead. Um, but yeah. So this year, I signed him up. He can go. First dance is Saturday. If he doesn't go, whatever. I don't care. Do we have an outfit that fits? But, he, well, unfortunately, we did have some funerals this year, so yes, he has oh. a, definitely a nice suit to wear. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's going on. So, oh my goodness, we'll see what happens. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, it's it's cute. It's actually well, really she, cute. He probably won't want to go to any of them now that you signed him up. Well, that'll I've, just be your. Luck. I'm fine. I mean, every okay, the, they have a, like a different theme. So the first theme, I think he if he goes to any of them, he would want to go to this one. It is uh, like jersey, like literally, you wear your favorite football jersey oh, and sneakers. Okay. Like if he doesn't so this go, this is more of like a social event than like a dance. They're like yeah, like social okay. things. Mm. The next one, I don't think he'll want to go to. It's like boots and bling. Um, oh, which you would want to go to, but I don't know if Chance yes, wants to go to it. Would. Right? Like yeah, boots and bling. Okay. And then I think the fourth one, the third one is. Um, I think it's just like country or something. I have no, but I know the first two because I was like, he will not want to go to Boots and Bling, thankfully, because I don't, he doesn't have a pair of boots. And what do you do? I would just have you help him. Um, but yeah, it's cute. It's a fun time. That's exciting. Yeah. Did you have a junior and a senior prom or just a senior prom? Yeah, I, I went to a small school, so we had a junior and a senior prom. Oh, see, I only had a senior prom. How great was your prom? Um, you know, oh, okay. I'm trying to think if it was really, I mean, I did lose my virginity at my oh. senior prom year, so that was not great. Um, yeah, but like, how <laughs> was like the party? Was it like fun? It was, I mean, I went to a small school, so it, there wasn't a lot of money to be spent. Mm. There wasn't like something amazing. Um, I forget our, 
I think Time of Your Life by Green Day was like our school, oh. like senior song, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of sad. Um, whatever. It was either that or My Heart Would Go On by Celine Dion. Oh, that's sadder. Um, <laughs> I was like between those two songs. Mm. Um, so, uh, but it was, I mean, it was okay. I, I mean, I went with my boyfriend. I liked him. That was a good thing. Um, my junior year, I just went with a group of girls and one of my friends, moms paid for all of us to go to like a nice steakhouse, which was really sweet. Um, but I don't know. It was, it was okay. It wasn't like what you thought it would be. It's not like yeah. you see on the movies where you walk in and it's some fabulous party. Proms these days are great. Like a lot of people have theirs at the, um, AT&T Stadium. Mine was at the Texas Motor Speedway. It was okay. It was kind of like a bad wedding. That's like, but it was, it was cool. But <laughs> if you have your prom at like AT&T Stadium, that's yeah, pretty, I did not have that pretty prom. legit. I did not have that prom. Yeah. Would you volunteer to be a chaperone for a chance's prom? Yes, but then he would not let me. He would not go if I, I wouldn't was. Tell him. You think I should just show up in a disguise? Okay, I, do you yes. know how fun that would be? I thought about doing that to these little dates that he goes to with his girlfriends <sighs> to the movie. I'm like, there's, I need to sit behind them. But if they're doing anything like uh, inappropriate, I would be like, excuse me, you're grounded. Absolutely, I'd hit it with your purse. Out. Yeah, I would hop out. Um, but <laughs> next year he's gonna have homecoming. And you oh. know, I'm excited because homecoming, well, I'm excited because you're my friend, because homecoming, you have to ask a girl in a big way. Oh, God. And you have the whole yes. proposal thing. And then you have to do the mums. Oh, I remember my mom. What an expense. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. Does the. Wait. Chance wears a mom? Yeah. I thought the girls were. Wait. Oh, wait. Hey, no. Chance, Chance makes a mom. Oh, I'll just buy that or have you make it. We're going to make it. <laughs> and think. then a girl makes him a garter. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, the girls have it much better than the boys. I thought the moms bought the mums. You still have to make it. But don't the moms make it for the? I mean, I'm not making it. But does I thought the girls' <laughs> well, moms? That's you. That's bought the mums for the girls. No, you make it. Uh -uh. The boys are in charge of that. Yeah. I hope he's single. Um, I'll be like, you, you need to go by the yourself. You make girls' mom, and yeah, you switch. Oh my gosh, that seems so unfair. Yeah. So um, although, did I wear? I might have worn a mum. It's very possible. That I need to find my photos. Wait, did you wear a mum? I, I could see myself doing that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't no, know that. No, I definitely wore a garter. I mean, maybe I did both. I don't know. Wait, I was so one I, big ball of ribbon that day, probably. I know at Cruz's school, um, the ninth graders like asked somebody out. Oh. So I'm thinking the same with Chance's school. I'm thinking it's kind of universal with all of them. And I know they're all like making these huge posters to do it. Well, we need to do something fabulous. That's what we have to do. Yes. So I'm going to need you to help me. Um, I saw something on TikTok where this one guy at school like had all of his friends take their shirts off and um, and then ask them. Like, with <laughs> the, no. And then it was like, will you go to home like homecoming with me with like all of the football players topless like written on their back? You don't think that's a good idea? Okay, I yeah. was like, that's a, a lot of effort. Mom. A girl made what? A girl made my garter. Okay. Confirmed. So we have to make a really Jeez, good mom. It's going to be sucks. huge. Okay, that sucks. I was thinking well, the other day, like, how lucky I'm to have boys because I'm not going to, well, I probably still will have the expense of a wedding. But, like, <laughs> normally you don't have that expense if you have boys, right? Because it's uh -huh. the girl, the you know, the wife's or, you know. That's where you're going to shine is a wedding. I know. I can't have my, my kids cannot have a shitty wedding, so I'm going to have to pay for it. I already know this. Because <laughs> um, it's like, you know, we can't, we have to have good You're going to come out in a sequin gown. Yes. I'll be like, I paid for it. I'm going to look fabulous. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Uh, you know, Travis's mo Travis's dad doubled my parents. I uh, had like a certain amount that they gave me for my wedding, mm -hmm. and it wasn't, you know, as much as Travis wanted because he wanted like alcohol for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so his dad like doubled our, like gave us money to double uh, our um, budget. So that's, people that I, I have like people that will randomly message me about like you know they're getting married in the same spot that we got married in Mexico and they'll ask questions and stuff and the amount of people whose parents just like throw them a like, hundred thousand dollars for a wedding, I'm just like. Where? What? Are they just like, it's just confusing. I'm like, that's so much money. Well, but then, you know, there's parents like you. So that's, <laughs> never mind. That. <laughs> yeah, that's that's nice. You know, I mean, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how much Big Daddy will want to spend. but um, I don't think you'll ask. I think you'll swipe and I'll answer just, yeah, questions I'll later. I'll be like, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for high school chance. That's where we're going to really shine. We're going to just, we're going to crush it. In high school? Yep. Yeah, I agree. I all agree. the dances, all the events, all the 
Homecoming especially. Yes, homecoming, mm-hmm. we have to do something really, really special. And then that's kind of what I'm excited about because I think that I have enough really fabulous friends where my kids don't even have to put effort into shining. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he doesn't do it himself because I wanted to help him with a gift for his girlfriend. And I had this really cute bracelet. I was like, let's get her this bracelet for her birthday. They were only together for a day, I know. But it was Louis Vuitton. It was really It was cute. one day? <laughs> yeah, it was 24 hours. Oh. But her birthday was the next day. And I was like, let's get her a gift. Get her a gift. He got her something that he picked out, which was still great, but not as good as my gift. Um, but hopefully for the asking, like he'll let us mm-hmm. take over because it has to be Ooh, cool. That'll be good. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm ready for him to go to high school Wait, now. Wait, did you guys do that whenever you were in school? Did you guys have the big proposals? Yeah, but they weren't as like grand and elaborate as they should be now. Like, but what was the best one that you saw at your school? Uh, the whole football team did something like in the hallway one day for like this girl. Like the quarterback was asking some like cheerleader and like the whole football team like partook in the situation. So it was kind of cool. Um, someone asked... Um, their girlfriend to homecoming at the Ranger Stadium, like on the Jumbotron. That was cool. Oh, that's cool. Like, we're going to go all out for okay, this. Perfect. We have we have some time to think yeah, about this, thankfully. Wait, year. does he have to ask someone? Oh, okay, that's next no, year. No, full year. Oh. That's next year. Next year. So you have, I thought we had like two you weeks. You have one year. No. But I did see, um, was in my memory because I did, I messaged Brandy yesterday. Her daughter got asked out to homecoming because she's a year older than Chance. And it was the cutest video I've ever seen. Um, cutest picture. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Um, so I'm like, next year. But the boy has to do it. So next year I'm going to help Chance. Mm. Yes, it's exciting. So yeah, even if he doesn't, I feel like he doesn't date a lot of girls from his school. He dates girls from other schools. Interesting. Yes. I don't understand how this private school co-mingling thing happens. Well, from what I gathered, all from what his buddy said, a lot of the girls in their grade that they want to date now are going for boys that are a year older than them. Like, mm. that's the cool thing. Oh. So I think they're just decided to go after other girls from different schools. Interesting. Yes. Strange. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm at the gym earlier today, and you know I have a job. I did not go in today because I— Mental health day. I'm, yeah, well, I'm leaving town tomorrow. I needed a mental health day, but I probably should have went in because I had all these people message me. And I—well, only two, honestly. Not all these people. <laughs> <laughs> two. But it felt like a million. <laughs> So I'm sitting there working out, have these work emails come in and I've not been in my working brain because I have been Mm. busy all weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, and both of them, um, are pretty much yelling at me via, um, email. One of them, um, bold red letters with five exclamation points under pretty much telling me that they've told, not me, I've never talked to this person a day in my life, but I guess uh, I, like something's wrong, they need some like PO thing, and um, I should know this by now, all in red, um, and then this other person like yelled at me because I didn't know what I was doing, anyways, it was horrible, I wasn't answering my phone, um, so I think I'm going to quit today. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, I think you I'm should. I'm like, I am not qualified. <laughs> I think you should quit. I think that's I, good yes, for you. I really, yeah, I think I'm done. I'm I think it's like, good Travis, to quit before you get fired. Like, Travis, I just do not, like, I don't even know how to answer these <laughs> people. go file unemployment. Uh, I, all I do <laughs> is get emails. I should go file file uh-huh. unemployment. What do you get if you make zero, though? Like, I don't know. Was that other, not lawsuit, but, like, pending uh, claim against us done yet? No, not yet. Uh, not yet. Yeah. I have a great story to share once it is, though. So. <laughs> Trey and I made somebody mad. <laughs> we did. <laughs> and it wasn't our fault. Well, no, it, no, was. it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I, well, no. no. Well, let's give it. Well, we need three more weeks and then, yes. Okay. And then Great. we'll give you all the details. It's a really good story. Details. I've been holding this for so long. I know, I know. Oh, it's a good one. It really. And I'm going to go into, I, I, have, I have nothing. Yeah. I have no weight in this game, so I'm just... Holding out till Stephanie gives me the green light. Yeah, but you know I have to like protect myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we do have a really, really, really good story uh, that I eventually sure we'll share. Okay, so I leave town tomorrow. Yeah, you're really leaving at a bad time for me. I really hope your trip gets canceled. I've been praying about it. <laughs> you're such an a <laughs> hole. I'm going to Maine. I've never been to Maine before. I thought you were going to Boston. Well, Boston, and then it's a, like a two and a half hour drive to Maine. But we're going oh. to Boston to see a client, um, like. Well, then you a, can't quit a yet. Client. Well, I mean, I'm just going as for free food. Um, but Travis is the one doing all the work, and then um, 
we're going to Boston. Travis is on the board of Big Brother Big Sister, and um, the guy who's over Big Brother Big Sister um, is um, from the Bush family. Not like the Bush Budweiser family, but like the Bush. The Bush beans. <laughs> <laughs> or the Bush beans. There's a lot of... To have the last name Bush is, I guess, not a bad thing. So, but from the um, ex-president Bush family, like the George so, W. Yeah, one. yeah. So, um, so we are going to like get. We're not staying, but we get to like see the Bush compound there, which will be kind of cool. Oh. I'm excited. I've never um, seen it before. So. Have you seen George W. around town? Yeah. Well, I've seen like okay. So if you live here, um, people in Texas will know, but you see people in Dallas will know. You see like him and his wife occasionally around town. My favorite place to eat, um, Rise Number One, mm-hmm. is kind of one of his favorite places as well. Um, but I've seen his wife out walking, and there's, like, Secret Service following her. Yeah, I've seen her walking behind your house before, and she'll, like, be walking with a friend, and then, like, maybe mm. 20 feet back, there's someone walking. Yeah. And then, like, 100 feet back, there's a Suburban just, like, trailing. Yes, yes. And my son, uh, Cruz, one of his best friends, lives right next, next to— door. Right next to uh, ex-president Bush, yeah. yes. Stressful. Dropping that kid off, I'm like, don't look the wrong way. You might get shot by Secret Service. I don't know. You just like, you know, you never know. But there's always a ton, like always like what, three or four black SUVs yes, in the driveway. Yes, but they're like, you never see yes. someone. And that's what makes me most like most nervous. I'm like, what do they know about me? Mm-hmm. They're like tapping my phone right now. I don't know. Oh, but. yeah. Oh, yeah. His friend said he's the nicest guy ever, though. He said he dresses up as the president for Halloween every year and gives out <laughs> full-size candy bars. Yeah, that's we need to go that's there. That's cool. We need to go there. No, yep. but yeah, they say he's really amazing. Um, but yeah, so I, I do know where he lives. But He um, lives in a gated neighborhood, yeah. but there's a house in that neighborhood that's being like completely remodeled. And I was just thinking, like, do they have to get... Like every service contractor that comes through that gate, like approved by Secret Service. I, would, I wonder what an ordeal that is. I would think so. But also, I noticed I was with Travis dropping crews off, and everyone in that neighborhood has American flags up. And Travis is like, You have to. If you have the president in your neighborhood, you have to be super patriotic mm-hmm. and have an American flag up. But did you know there are certain rules about an American flag? Kind of. Okay. So. Did you know that if you have an American flag up, that you have to have a light shining on it in the evening? No. So, yes, that is uh, flag etiquette. Interesting. Is that like a law? It's flag etiquette. Look up flag etiquette. There's other things that are on there. Travis knows all of them. Really? Uh Uh-huh. Flag etiquette. I know the flag can never touch the ground. Um, It should never be worn as apparel, bedding, or drapery. Mm Mm-hmm. It should never be displayed upside down unless trying to convey a sign of distress or danger. The flag should never touch anything beneath it. This includes water, merchandise, etc., or the floor. And oh, this is on the, the Department of Defense's website. Yes, yes, there are like certain flag etiquettes that you should do. Travis knows them because we have a flag at our company, and you always have to have a spotlight going up on the flag, and you're supposed to take. If you don't have a spotlight, you're supposed to take the flag down and fold it every night. If it's displayed horizontally against the wall, it should be the uppermost flag in its own right. So it has to be as the highest point, I guess. Um, if it is dirty, ripped, or wrinkled, it needs to be destroyed and not displayed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because hmm. we have to get we get new flags. There's a, actually a store in Dallas um, – called the flag store yeah that, that uh-huh. huge one in Irving yeah. yeah so we get flags from there yeah oh yeah but um yeah so I just a little flag etiquette but yeah we were driving down and Travis was like oh my gosh uh talking about how some of these people had their flags up and they did not have a light on it and I was like what and he was like yes you're supposed to have a light shining on your flag um in the evening and if not you're supposed to take it down every day interesting yes I'd be the a little more stressed you know, if the, the president more you know in the I would too that's what Travis said he was like I feel like all these people need to know Uh The flag etiquette. Like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash weekly dose and get on your way to being your best self. I do toss and turn a lot at night thinking about parenting and my mom to this day still calls me and apologizes for things that I do not remember that happened. Like, and she's like, I'm sorry, I didn't pick you up that one time in fifth grade until like 20 minutes after school got out. And I'm like, mom, I really, I promise you, I am not worried about it. Are like, you I ever like, you know, I was just thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, That was just across my mind too. No, but it makes me realize that every parent does that. Like every parent 
takes. I think it's. I think you should take your job as a parent very seriously. But every parent's always concerned about: Am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right choices? Are my children um, going to think that I let them down when they get older? It's just. I think. Everyone screws yes. up their kid in their own special way. You just got to figure out how you do it, you know? <laughs> exactly, and apologize. So, yes, this week with my children between Chance and Cruz, especially with Chance and his dating life, it's cute, but it also is the most stressful thing in the world to me um, because he's very secretive. So I'm hoping he's making really good choices. Um, but I have to talk to my therapist a lot about it because it's hard to not be too much of a helicopter parent. Like, it's really hard for me to drop him off at a theater with his friends and their girlfriends and... Not go inside? Not go inside with a mask and a wig and spy on my child. Like, it's hard for me to kind of let go and cut those strings and realize that I've done a good job as a parent, and now it's up to him to take the tools and make good choices. But if um, you ever need someone to put on a mask and a wig with you, I'm always available I for that. I know you are. I know you are. Yes. But that's one thing I'm really, really working on with my therapist is the older my kids get. Letting go. Letting go is so mm. hard. Just knowing that you've taught them what they need to learn in life and that sometimes even when they fall, it's good lessons to learn. And that's how you grow as a human. Yeah. But it's hard to not be there before they fall. It's hard to let them make those choices. I think you do such a good job, though, at talking to your kids about therapy, too, to where they know that those thoughts and feelings don't need to be bottled up inside, that they should share those. And it's healthy to get those things out, whether it's with you or with a therapist of their own. Yes, absolutely. No, that's it's so important. I think what I love about, especially the time that we're living in now, is there's not that stigma on therapy that there was whenever I was younger. I think when I was younger, there was a big stigma. If you go to therapy, there's something really wrong with you. You know, you have so many issues you need to work out. And I love that now people are very open about... I know, I feel like I'm the opposite now. I'm yes. like, you don't go to therapy? Yes, What's wrong like, with you? I feel like so like, many people go and they use yeah. it as, a, as like a life tool. And it's not like their life's falling apart, but they go to have somebody to talk to, to make sure that they're living their healthiest life. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like... Um, Therapy keeps my life intact. It yes. keeps me from falling apart. Yes, That's, you know exactly. You don't always need to see a therapist just when things are falling apart. Sometimes it's good to go in, kind of like with your car that I had to go into this week. Just get like a little bit of tune-up on it. Yeah. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you do is fill out a brief questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Weekly Dose today to get 10% off of your first month. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Weekly Dose. Um, so I was just thinking about this on the way here. I don't know why this crossed my mind. Stephanie tried to take her Bentley to a quick car for an oil change a few weeks ago and <laughs> yes. was turned down, shockingly. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. She called me shocked and a little offended that no quick car would touch her car. I went to three quick car places. <laughs> All I wanted, it said I was running low on oil. All I wanted then was to put a little oil in my car. None of them would touch it with a 10-foot pole. Yeah. And I was like, what kind of car am I driving? What kind of car am I driving where I cannot get regular service on it? So I have a friend who's like real big in cars. And I was asking him about this. I was like, why can you only take a Bentley to a Bentley dealership? <laughs> and he said it really has nothing to do with like the oil or the car. It has everything to do with their liability insurance. They probably oh. are not covered to touch a car of that caliber to where, like, if they did something wrong to it, they're screwed. Well, they were touching other other nice, expensive cars, but they well, literally— they probably weren't worth that much. They literally pointed me out, came up to me. I'm sure I, they said, get out of our driveway, like, lady. We don't have money for this. They're like, we can't help you. You have to go somewhere else. And I was like, where do I go? I mean, I could have— my car could have stalled without the oil. I literally drove around for, like, 35 <laughs> minutes, like, looking for any place to give me oil— and none of them would do it. And then finally I was like, dang it, I'm going to have to go to. And I went to Bentley. And then I was like, oh, it's going to take too long. I know this. Um, but did you know you cannot actually go to Bentley in Dallas? You you have to go somewhere else. And this really this weird. This is the best part. It's on Stripper Row. If you live in Dallas, you know what I'm talking about. It is not yeah. where you think it should be. There is a Bentley and a Rolls Royce. Well, like the Maintenance center is over by all the strip clubs. Yes. It is not where it's you want to be. Like, it's like me 
with my Bentley and you all. and Cinnamon are out there yeah, getting and an cinnamon. oil change. Yeah. So then I drop my car off. I tell I call them and I don't know why. I have nothing to do with my life. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. But for some reason in my head, I believe that I do. And I really hate to be. So I'm like, how long am I going to be there for? And they're like 20, 30 minutes, depending on the amount of people. And I said, okay, well, How many Bentleys are getting oil changed today, Sarah? I'm like, Sarah, then tell me, uh, are you busier (laughs) right after carpool, like at 9 a.m.? Are you, when you open, are you busier right before I pick crews up, like at 1 Because she knows when that is. Like, when am I go- when's the best time? Because I don't want to, I hate waiting. I don't want to hang out at this dealership, especially if it's on Stripper Row. And she says, oh, mornings are always better. I'm like, perfect. I will be there right after I drop my kid off at Carpool. So I go there. And it is not in an area of town that you're just going to, like, want to hang out and walk around and explore, right? Like, it's, it's not where you would think you would take your Bentley for an oil change. No. I mean, unless you want to go see... Um, some boobies, uh, you're not going to get out of your car and like explore the neighborhood. So I drop my car off and the guy is like, oh, um, you know, it'll be about 20, 30 minutes. You're free to go set in the waiting room. Or would you like to, would you like to go like walk around? And I was like, sir, I'm not trying to be rude, but who in their right mind is like taking you up on the offer to walk around (laughs) this area? Like not I, (laughs) like there's no way I'm like, I'll just go sit back here and wait. Um, but yeah, it was, it's so weird. It is very, it's a strange car to have sometimes. (laughs) I I mean, like, uh, I would much rather go to a quick loop, um, than go back there. Well, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm so sorry. For but I did call Trey, and I was so annoyed. And yep. I was like, because Travis always says, "Go like never go to the place you get your car to get your tires changed, mm-hmm. like to get new tires and stuff. Always go to these other places." Well, I'm concerned if I ever pop a tire, I'm gonna have to go back out there because I don't know if they're even. Gonna, I don't know. It's so annoying. I'll hobbling over to Stripper Row. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be exactly. Um, but, um, so I thought the same with oil change. And then I called Travis after I go to strip a row and get it taken care of. I call him and I'm like, can you believe that nobody would help me? Um, I felt like pretty woman, you know, when she walks into all of those, um, places to get clothes uh-huh. and they turn her away and you're just feeling real bad about yourself. Yep. Um, and then you go back to strip a row and then where you belong, I guess, and get your <laughs> car fixed. Um, you know what? Actually last week. Zach and I were talking to our producer, Josh, about this menace on the road, and that menace is you. Mm-hmm. I have had, yes, last week, <laughs> I had I do? three people, three people sent me a photo of you on the highway driving with your blinker on, just, just hauling it. Oh, yeah, three I do that people. a lot. I and do that Josh a lot. said he saw you, <laughs> same situation, driving, blinker, no plans to turn. <laughs> and you're not hard to miss. It's a bright blue Bentley. I do that a lot. You know, I forget that I, because I, I, I'm very indecisive, so I'll think I want to get in the other lane, and then I get stressed out because the other cars are not letting me over. And then, like, 10 minutes later, my son's like, Mom, you're blinking. Well, and each time, I think it was two of the three times, um, they said she was definitely on the phone laughing to someone, and I was like, that, yeah, yeah. that's me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Josh, no. didn't you say you that saw her so yourself? Mean. Did you take a video? I didn't take a video. I was with my mom, and I look over, and I'm just like, that's Stephanie Holman. I recognize that. Oh, my. I had to get I noticed the left blinker was on. <laughs> like, oh, man. That <laughs> was, is so... I was, like, I was like, I could tell her right now, but also she's probably driving, so I don't want to distract her. Oh, anymore. no. I feel free. Oh, my. <laughs> no, I know that's very true. Yes, I was probably trying to find my way to get that oil change, and <laughs> I got turned around. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you got that all handled. Yes, me Jesus, too. take the wheel next time you gotta I, get an oil change. I'm gonna send you next time. I'm not <laughs> doing that again. That was horrible. That was horrible. Good stuff. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for listening and supporting. You can follow me at Step Holman on all the social media things. You can follow me <laughs> at Trey underscore Stewart. You're getting lazier and lazier with I your know. outro. <laughs> it's because I have a job. And this is, you know, I feel like I have 15 jobs now. It's so stressful. So you can follow me where you find me. <laughs> and you, you can follow our podcast on Instagram at BS Podcast, or you can watch it on YouTube at Weekly Dose of BS. Bye. Bye. Yay, Networks.